Hey guys! In this video, we're gonna find the volume using the dishwasher method and the cylindrical shell method. So what's the difference and how do we know which one to use? Well, don't worry, it's very easy. So let's start with the dishwasher method. Here we have a function y is equal to x to the power of 3 and we want to take the area between the y-axis and this function, so we want to take the area here and rotate it around the y-axis. So as you can see, this is the three-dimensional object that we want to find the volume of. So if the object looks like half of a cucumber, then you have to use the dishwasher method. And this method says that if the cross-section is on the y-axis, then you integrate with respect to y. If it's on the x-axis, like this, then you have to integrate with respect to x. Since it's on the y-axis, the volume formula is going to be equal to the integral from a to b, where a is the bottom right here, and b is the very top, so b is right here, of a of y dy. where a of y is the area of the cross-section. Now, I'm going to show you an easy trick to remember this formula. All you have to do is understand it. So basically, this part is saying that we're going to find the area of the cross-sections from a to b. So starting from a, we're going to find the area of the cross-section here, and then we're going to find the area of the cross-section here, and then here, and then here, and I think you kind of get the idea. So we're going to keep finding the area of the cross-sections until we reach the very top, where d of y is the thickness of this dish. So it's like the thickness, the distance from here to here. That's going to be the thickness of the dish. And at the end of the day, the integral sign means that we're going to add all of the areas of the cross-sections from the top to the bottom. And that's going to give us the volume of this three-dimensional object. Let's go ahead and find the volume. So step number one, we want to find A and B. So since A is right here at the center, then A is equal to zero, where B is equal to eight. So I wrote the number eight right there. So b is going to be equal to 8. Step number 2 is to find the area of the cross-section. So since the cross-section or the dish is a circle, then the area must be pi times the radius to the power of 2. So the area a of y is equal to pi times the radius to the power of 2. Now, the distance from the center until we reach the cross-section is y. And the distance from the y-axis until we touch this function, this distance is x. And so the radius is x. So the area is the same as pi times x to the power of 2. So since we're trying to integrate with respect to y, we need to rewrite this function in terms of y. Now, we know that y is equal to x to the power of 3. So if we take the cube root of both sides, we're going to get x is equal to y to the power of 1 third. And we can replace it with x right here. So finally, the area is equal to pi times y to the power of one third to the power of two and that will simply give us pi times y to the power of two thirds now we found the area of the cross section we can go ahead and substitute it back into the integral The third and final step is to evaluate this integral. So since pi is just a constant, we can move it outside of the integral. So v is equal to pi 
times the integral from 0 to 8 of y to the power of 2 over 3 dy. This is the same as pi times the antiderivative of y to the power of 2 over 3. So we're going to get y to the power of 5 over 3, and then we divide by 5 over 3. So when you divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. And then the limit goes from 8 to 0. So the next step is just substituting these numbers into our formula. We're going to get pi times 3 over 5 times 8 to the power of 5 over 3 minus 3 over 5 times 0 to the power of 5 over 3. So we know right away this right here is going to be 0. Now, what is 8 to the power of 5 over 3? Well, 8 to the power of 5 over 3 is the same as 8 to the power of 1 over 3 to the power of 5, which is the same as 2 to the power of 5, which is just 32. So pi times 32 times 3 is going to be 96 over 5. And the final answer is equal to 96 over 5 times pi. Now, you can leave it the way it is, or you can say unit to the power of 3. Basically, that means we have found the volume of this three-dimensional shape using the dishwasher method. Now, let's take a look at the second method to find the volume, which is the cylindrical shell method. So we have a function, y is equal to 2 times x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3. And we're going to take the area between this function and the x-axis and rotate it around the y-axis. Before I show you how to find the volume, I would like you to pause the video and try finding the volume using the dishwasher method. And you will notice that it's impossible. The trick here is if the shape that you get does not look like a cucumber cut in half. So in this case, our three-dimensional object looks kind of like a mountain with a dent inside it. And it does not look like a cucumber shape cut in half. You have to use the cylindrical shell method. And the shell method says that if we have a cylinder, if we put the cylinder here, and the base of that cylinder is on the x-axis, then you integrate with respect to x. If the base of the cylinder is on the y-axis, so if the cylinder looks like this, and the base of the cylinder is on the y-axis, then we integrate with respect to y. In this case, it's on the x-axis, so the volume formula will simply be the integral from a to b, of 2 times pi times the radius times the height. d of x is just the thickness of the shell. So it's basically the distance from here to here. That's going to be the thickness of the shell right there. So what this formula is saying is from a to b, so from a right here, and b, this is a and that's b, we're going to take the volume of each shell. So we're going to take the volume of this shell right there. And then we're going to take the volume of this shell moving from here to here, right? So the volume of this shell. And then we're going to take the volume of this shell right here. And then as we move towards B, we're going to take the volume of this shell right there. And then we're going to take the volume of this shell. So I think you understand what I mean. And then finally, we're just going to take the volume of the final shell. So this shell right there. And the integral sign right here means that we add all of those volumes of our shells together. And that's going to give us the volume of our three-dimensional object. Now, let's find the volume of this shape using the formula. So step number one is to find A and B. So A is going to be in the middle. 
So A is at the center, and therefore A is equal to 0, and B is right here, so B is equal to 2. So the integral goes from 0 to 2. The second step is to find the radius and the height. So looking at this shell, we know that the radius is just x from here to here. So the radius r of x is equal to x. Now how about the height? f of x. The height is just y. So f of x is equal to y. And we know that y is, is equal to this right here. So that's going to be 2 times x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3. Step number 3 and the last step is to evaluate this integral. So since 2 pi is just a constant, we can move it outside of the integral. So we're going to get 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 2. And x times this, we're going to get 2 times x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 4 dx. And this is the same as 2 times pi times the antiderivative of 2 times x to the power of 3. And if you find the antiderivative, you're going to get 1 over 2 times x to the power of 4 minus 1 over 5 times x to the power of 5. And the limit goes from 2 to 0. If you substitute these limits in, you're going to get 2 times pi times 1 over 2 and then when you put the 2 in here, you're going to get 16, because 2 to the power of 4 is 16, minus 1 over 5. And when you put the 2 in, you're going to get 2 to the power of 5, which is just 32. And when you substitute the 0, everything else is going to be 0. So this is our substitution, and we finished it. And this is equal to 2 times pi times 1 over 2 times 16, which is 8 minus 32 over 5. Now, 8 is the same thing as 40 divided by 5. So this is 40 divided by 5. And then 40 over 5 minus 32 over 5 is the same thing as 8 over 5. So this is 8 over 5. And when you multiply these two together, the answer will simply be 16 divided by 5 times pi. And you can leave it the way it is, or you can say unit to the power of 3. So there we go. This is the volume of our three-dimensional object using the cylindrical shell.